uh, members of council of the National Open University of Nigeria, our great Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdallah Uba Adamu, Prince officers of our great university, Professor Nimi Briggs, who is one of the leading lights of higher education in Africa and in medical science. Professor Chiedu Mafiana, Ibide past president of the Africa Quality Assurance Network. Members of Senate, our guest speaker, His Excellency, Ambassador Chris Tova J. Meyaki, staff and students of NOWN, our graduating participants, family and friends, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, our program for this wonderful day is as shown on the screen. And uh, it's now my pleasure to uh, move on to uh, the first item, which, as you can see, is at 155, dead on 155. Noun is noted for keeping well within time, and uh, it's a procession. Uh, you will notice, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that we have uh, a number of categories of uh, graduates for today. Uh, we have Distinction Plus Plus, we have Distinction Plus, we have Distinction, we have Credit Plus, we have Merit, we have Merit, we have, and we have Pass. Our participants will come into the Convocation Arena in, this, in that order, and you'll be able to see their scores, their total scores, as well as their category of... <laughs>
Thank you all very much. You may be seated. We will now proceed to the next item on uh, virtual convocation graduation agenda, which is a welcome and brief details of the course from the facilitator general. Uh, it's a pleasure on behalf of, of all the facilitators to welcome you to this virtual graduation ceremony of uh, a unique program, the Special Open and Distance Learning Training Program for all the administrative staff of the National Open University of Nigeria, the best in Africa, uh, who are on county 7 to 15, on setting up and managing e-learning platform for quality university education. Now, this course is set within the Council Senate framework of the now 2019-2022 transformation agenda. This course, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, is to strengthen the capacity of staff of the National Open University of Nigeria, administrative staff on county seven to 15, to enable them to support the delivery of courses that will lead to significant improvement in the quality of our graduates so that graduates of our great university will be most sought after in Nigeria, indeed, the rest of Africa. This training, ladies and gentlemen, is also meant to support the academic staff to deliver the best ODL programs in Africa. The third objective of this training program is for National Open University to train master trainers of the administrative category who will now be available for training all administrative staff in the Nigerian university system for universities that are devoted or that are wishing to deliver open and distance learning. And that is the heart of the matter uh, these days. And also for the entire school system. Our grandpa, Professor Nimi Briggs is here. We are set to train all these, all these teachers in River State. But set to train all the teachers in Zamfara, in Kogi, and everywhere, delivering quality ODL as stimulated by COVID-19 environment. I'm pleased to let you know that the Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdallah Obadamu, and his Senate came up with what we call our flagship programs. And the Council of the University has blessed these programs. What are flagship programs? These are programs among the lot, over 40 something that we have, that we want to ensure that in the next four years, no university in Nigeria will be able to produce graduates that will match us. What are these programs? We have BSc Criminology and Security Studies. We make a boast, ladies and gentlemen, that when we train out this set of graduates, the matter of security challenges, kidnapping, and all of that, we'll be able to get people who will. Uh, be at the nodal points for tackling these challenges. BSc Computer Science, BSc Entrepreneurship and Business Management, BSc Mass Communication, and BSc Peace Studies and Conflict Resolution. This course, Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, has been very, very rigorous. It's intensive. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We are 615 participants, including the registrar. That's leadership by example. I want to let you know that when we had the training for all the administ uh, academic staff, the vice chancellor himself was at the lead of the training. He was, he, was he was a participant in the training and he showed leadership by example. The bossa was also part of this uh, admin uh, officer's training. And all administrative staff in our great university counted 7 to 15 from all our study centers spread across this country participated in the training program. What is this training program like? It is extremely rich. You can get it nowhere. Yes, nowhere in the whole of the world where you have an open university subject its administrative staff to this kind of content. So what is the content? There are 21 items that you can see here. But I'm going to highlight a few. They are not able 
to set up the virtual learning environment and deliver courses that the academy staff will put together for them. They're able to set up a virtual library within the course. Ah, you need to vi visit the virtual libraries that the, uh, the, the participants set up. It is, it is uh, out of this world. They're able to lay out activities for the week using homegrown buttons. They develop the buttons themselves, not to go in, buy or import from elsewhere. And they're able to get scrolling my key to attract the students. They're able to set up discussion forum for the, for the students, harvest the, uh, the, course, uh, the contribution for discussion forum, send for market and defend this course to the students. They're able to set up quiz. Wonderful. They were able to conduct Zoom lessons. Each of the participants conducted at least two Zoom lessons. And they were able to offer, offer good learner support. And they sent reports of log of students' activities to the assessors and to the, the students themselves. They were able to engage the students, the students on online chat. And they set up comprehensive examination for their students at the end of training course. And they were able to set up question bank. Ladies and gentlemen, I've welcomed you and I'll give you details of the course. So I'm moving on now to our vice chancellor, a remarkable administrator, clear headed visionary, Professor Abdallah Badamu. And fellow participants in this program, I would also like to welcome His Excellency, uh, Brother Chris Mayaki the guest speaker in this uh, process. I'm very proud, extremely proud, to be sitting at the top of this university today. Like the facilitator general said, there is no university in the whole of Africa that has been able to do this. And I will even boast and say the whole of the world, if there is any, let us know. Training driver, security, up to the registrar and vice chancellor. This is it. The entire sector, from our driver, to security of the vice chancellor from the lowest to the highest in terms of ranking this is the only university that has been able to do that and uh, i know it was grueling i know it was tasking but i know it will also be rewarding facilitator general sir ladies and gentlemen today in the in the, in the morning i received a delegation from a university in benway state they want us to sign an mou in order to train their staff on odl and that will be facilitated by one of your students who has got a distinction, Professor Mrs. Jockson. So we are signing the MOU on Friday. So we, we have already started. While uh, the facilitator general will be very busy with teachers in Rivers, teachers in Koji, teachers in, uh, in, in Lagos, we will be busy with our colleagues in other universities, showing them that no matter how you put it, no matter how you translate it, no matter how you, you interpret it, now is the first, the best, and will always be the best in terms of everything. So this is our proudest moment. Today we are graduating non-teaching <clears throat> staff in, in this particular process. I, I'm, I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be part of this history. I'm proud to be part of the process that initiated this, and I'm proud to have participated in this. But then it is not surprising that the person who led all this thing was no less than Peter Okebukola himself. He was my teacher. In case people don't know, he, he was also he was also not only my teacher but also my twin, and uh, we were twined by late uh, Professor Samtunde Baja here in Abuja about 20 years ago when he said Peter and Abdullah are my two sons. So we have been together since that particular time, and that is why we share so many commonalities. I'm very very proud to be associated with him, and we are very proud to have him in this university to lead this university into greater height and glory. I would like to congratulate all of you, even those who fail. You never fail in, in, in uh, Professor Okebukola's uh, uh, classes. You always learn something. There is always something that you have been able to pick up. So I would like to congratulate all of you for, for sitting down. There is a house award, which I think I prepared to you, the Judge Richewa. That is really, really digging in and making sure that you are able to, to go through all this program. And I'm very, very proud of the fact that we have been able to go through it, where we're able to survive through it. And if, if you look at yourself now, the, the thing you will say is, how on earth did I manage to survive without this thing? It is like your phone. You, you keep asking yourself, how on earth did I survive without my phone? So I was living in a primitive life before. The same thing is with these skills that we have acquired today. 
how were you able to be a noun for 10 years? A noun, but yet you don't know anything about battle learning environment. You don't even know how to do it. Today is the day of reckoning. Today is the day of judgment. Today is the day in which you prove to yourself that yes, you are truly part of OTL. And today is the day we export you to the whole world so that the entire planet will know that people from now are better, better, better. And I'm saying this knowing that NUT is here. We are better than anybody else. So let's take on the entire country. The whole of 174 universities in Nigeria, we are ready to train all of them in BLE because we have already embraced the new normal. Thanks to our facilitator general for his uh, wonderful leadership. And thanks to the university senate for approving this particular program. And most importantly, thanks to the university council for providing funding uh, for this program. So once more, I would like to congratulate everyone, uh, including those who have failed, but I can assure you, you didn't fail. You must have acquired something. Uh, I know it was very tough, very strenuous. Now, once you have learned this, please don't just leave it at that. Continue practicing. Continue creating imaginary subjects so that you can continue to, to become the best that you can become. So I wish you all the best and God's guidance in our future end of us. And I look forward to seeing you in the future because I have, uh, and I know Facilitator General will not be very happy with this, but I have only 80 days to go. Uh, so but I hope after 80 days, I might still be able to connect with you one way or the other. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you so very much, our great Vice Chancellor. 80 days, that's in your own pocket. Too. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's uh, a wonderful address that we received from our Vice Chancellor. And uh, uh, so we're going to applaud him again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, uh, we are moving on. If you check your watches, you find that it's exactly 2.15 or a minute to 2.15. As I said, we are very time conscious in the National Open University of Nigeria. And we have a, a, a doing of administration, a doing of the international community. Ambassador Chris J. Miyake who is the Deputy Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission. He uh, will be giving us a graduation lecture entitled Role of okay, graduation. Staff in the Delivery of Quality, Open, and Distance Education in the Nigeria University System. My pleasure to invite His Excellency Abazoku Mayake. Uh, you can see that we have Professor Nimi Briggs, Professor Chidu Mafiana. These are our giants in Stratcom that have come to listen to the erudition of uh, Pro, uh, Ambassador Chris J. Maya. It's my pleasure. Uh, the uh, visitor to the National Open University of Nigeria, uh, the Chancellor, uh, the uh, Professor Peter uh, Okebu Abkinshola. Okibukola, OFR, uh, our teacher, our mentor, our benefactor, from whom we continue to draw a lot of inspiration. Members of your council, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdullah Uba Adamu, the Principal Officers, Management Staff, students of noun, and specifically the proud graduates of uh, today, uh, permit me to stand on existing protocol. Uh, but let me also quickly uh, bring warm felicitations from our boss your strategic partner and your ardent supporter, the Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid, and of course, the warm felicitations of the entire management and staff of the NUC. Uh, sir, I consider this an immense privilege uh, to have been uh, invited to give the convocation lecture on this special graduation ceremony. And not only is the topic of my short address the role of administrative staff in the delivery of quality ODL in the Nigerian university system apt for this occasion. It also happens to be that recurring decimal which has continually engaged my attention for most of my public service career trajectory, both at the NUC and at the Plata State Cabinet Office where I've had, where I had a brief uh, stint. However, I can hardly do more than touch superficially on the subject considering the time allocated for my presentation. I'd like to still plead that I still have my original 15 minutes, sir. Yes, Three have. major issues stand out today, sir. ODL, administration, and quality. 
The latter being the notion that all the administrative arms in an ODL ecosystem must be seen to be operating as full strength in such a manner that our own brand of ODL is not only reputable, but of high and comparable standards. And now the role of ODL, uh, without boring you, uh, the physical separation of the teacher and learner with particular emphasis on the use of appropriate te technological tools based on a philosophy of openness and the eradication of all forms of, and the suppression of all forms of barriers to education, you know, are, are those concomitants that make it possible for any meaningful ODL experience uh, to take place. Um, so what constitutes administrative functions? As a general concept, university administration means uh, the day-to-day -day management of the affairs of a university. Uh, it is generally conceived as having the following attributes. So for you to uh, demonstrate those things that make you truly a university administration, you must uh, be able in your characteristics, in, your, in the nature, of, in the dynamics of what you do, you're preoccupied with, will be uh, planning, uh, organization, direction, control, and more importantly, uh, data management and data processing, documentation, record keeping, and facilitation, including keeping the institutional memory of that, uh, uh, that uh, particular institution. Like most other organizations, the average university has a compartmentalized structure, such as academic and non-academic divisions, faculties, or schools, the library, departments, and other academic units, the registry, the bursary, the directorates, the student advisory and welfare divisions, among several others. This, uh, this structure involves a complex division of labor, which therefore poses a great challenge to the university administrator. The total sum of it all is that university, a university administrator is involved in sundry assignments of the institution, which include, among others, planning and preparing budgets, uh, academic programs, teaching, assisting academic staff in their research projects, et cetera, et cetera. The functions of the administrative staff also include committee assignments and servicing of various meetings, from those of the governing council to the ones held at the smallest, smallest units of the university. Now, some clarification on the non-exclusivity of roles. Um, although we have used the term administrative staff, it should be noted that the idea percolates from the highest, such as the vice chancellor to any staff, academic and non-academic, who is given an administrative assignment in the university. What this means is that although uh, the, the connotation administra administrative uh, would seem to be residual to only those uh, careerists, those people who are identified as career staff, uh, you will all agree that uh, academic staff, because of the unique nature of the system, have also uh, been uh, involved uh, in the day-to-day -day running of the universities. And so uh, there are no functions that are exclusive to the administrative uh, you know, staff of the universities because universities, as we all know, uh, normally operate in a committee system in which academics tend to also uh, partake. Um, the eclectic nature of administration in the university system, therefore, accounts for the history of generations of academics uh, who have also been distinguished administrators. Uh, university dons have generally been effective administrators in positions even outside the ivory towers. I dare to say our dear Professor Peter Okebukola, Professor Emeritus Nimi Briggs, among several others, uh, you know, point, uh, you know, uh, 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 examples of this uh, very unique, uh, you know, nature of the university system. Um, uh, we are also at the trajectory where ODL uh, is gaining a lot of currency. It is now widely uh, accepted. And although an administrator coming from a conventional university uh, to a place like now can find a place, uh, however, such an administrator must be prepared to adjust to the new realities. The new mode of learning is ICT driven. It has a different uh, and unique ecosystem. It has specialized departments that help to manage the technical and electronic components of the functions of administration. So who are the administrative staff in an ODL delivery system? They can be described as those who provide administrative and other forms of support services to students, as well as the nexus between the academic and administrative uh, components. They are saddled with the 
responsibilities of overseeing and coordinating all distance learning activities. Um, indeed, the importance of the administrative staff in the OEL delivery system is, however, becoming even increasingly amplified, especially as a result of the growth of information technology and enhanced mode of ODL delivery system, which has placed more emphasis on the role of the administrative and technical support service staff in the creation, management, and administration of delivery tools, such as e-learning platforms, websites for academic activities, and the conduct of e-examinations. Um, the administrative staff, I should add, plays significant roles in ensuring that quality delivery of e-learning uh, take, uh, takes place. So being a part of this gamut of the complex administrative process, the administrative staff is not only a stakeholder, but a life enhancer. And I repeat this, the administrative staff is not only uh, a stakeholder, but a life enhancer. He's also a facilitator who, among others, is expected to ensure that all online and printed materials are accessible. He manages the virtual learning environment. He makes uh, decisions and policies and programs. He organizes and coordinates orientation and matriculation exercises. He conducts and supervises e-examinations, as I already alluded to, among other student activities such as teaching practice, moot court, and sideways. The, the administrator will also be expected to carry out advocacy and other forms of publicity, which will help to throw more light on the uniqueness of ODL, thereby making it acceptable and broadening student enrollment. They also are preoccupied with monitoring student progress, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they provide general administration, registration, payment, processing requests, and liaison with management and colleagues on the main campus. And then they also ensure that there's access to email facilities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, let me recommend that for an administrator working in an ODL system, such as now, they will always require uh, tools and, no, and new, new tools and new knowledge uh, and skill sets to be able to cope with it. Being ICT literally is no longer sufficient. The administrative staff must be prepared for full digital transformation, be proficient in the application of any computer software, be competent in setting up a virtual learning environment to which the ODL facilitator and his or her students can communicate, will be able to initiate, host, and organize things like the Zoom and virtual meetings, supervising and conducting e-examination, et cetera, et cetera, while sometimes undertaking e-payments. Consequently, uh, we recommend continuous training and retraining and retooling, including exposure to the best practices and the change and modern management and administrative techniques that are very uh, necessary. Uh, I recommend that uh, this new crop of officers must, by uh, you know, necessity, do away with antiquated, counterproductive, and administrative bottlenecks. They must realign themselves with a style of leadership that fosters efficient and effective ODL delivery. Uh, it is generally believed, uh, facilitates a general uh, vice chancellor and distinguished participants that, uh, and there is compelling evidence to show now more than ever that eroded work ethics, weak administrative, organizational, and management systems are partly responsible for the inability of the system to rise to the occasion. And so therefore, the notion that all arms of the ODL must be seen to be operating at full strength, based on high standards, quality, and a solid reputation uh, is not something that can be uh, treated with levity. The administrative staff in an ODL setting must play a major role in dispelling the rumors and the apprehension and misgivings and the poor perception from the public over the quality of ODL degrees and products. This Herculean task requires dynamic, creative, and uh, uh, proactive uh, leadership based on the much needed residual knowledge uh, to drive change. The administrative staff, I also emphasize, must seize every golden moment and make himself or herself relevant in the scheme of events. By conclusion, and finally, let me congratulate uh, all our proud graduates and their benefactors on your successful completion of the special ODL training and your initiation into the category of administrative staff who can now say that they are qualified to work in now. With your new skills, you have been given a major game-changing opportunity to transform the conduct and character of administrative duties in this great institution. You are to demonstrate outstanding work ethics, capacity, 
competence, relevance, team spirit by pursuing excellence and greatness at all times. Let me also say that you belong to a unique career path, which I all urge you to be proud of. May I also charge you to seize the golden moment, any golden moment that unlocks your potentials and that which makes you highly competitive rather than retrogressive, so as not to be seen to be that proverbial, proverbial weakest link in the chain of command. Uh, Facilitator General, uh, Vice Chancellor, Principal Officers of Noun, Distinguished Participants, Professor Emeritus Nimit Briggs, and our great members of uh, Stratcom, our eminent uh, advisors uh, on the, the reposition of higher education in Nigeria. I, I, I wish uh, you all uh, resounding success. Uh, this is especially to the graduates. I wish you and I wish each and every one of you resounding success in your future career and professional pursuits. And I thank uh, the members of the audience uh, for listening to me. And once again, sir, I want to uh, say a big thank you. It is with such humility and profound gratitude, sir, that I thank you for this uh, learning curve yet that you have so graciously provided me. And I wish you uh, a very good afternoon. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much, uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Chris Bayaki. You can see that there's a resounding round of applause for you. I did mention, I think last week, that when His Excellency Ambassador Chris Mayeke, you know, addressed a, a UN gathering, 191 countries, a UNESCO gathering uh, in Slovenia, I think, the whole place was shaken because of the erudition, because of the deep thoughts that went into that address. I can see a simile, I can see some uh, similarity with that, that speech you gave to 191 countries. We are deeply indebted to you Ambassador Christopher J. Mayaki, and I want to assure you, on behalf of Council and our VC is here, that this your speech will be produced and circulated among all our staff, and academic and, uh, and non-teaching, administrative, all our staff. And your recommendation, you, we are going to present it at the next Council meeting, because you made some very far-reaching recommendations, and I pick one of them, Your Excellency, which is that we should regard this as a continuous training regime, retooling our administrative staff and also our academic staff, I think. And that will mean that every year, every year, we, the VC says he has 80 more uh, days. We have uh, about a year, so a few months plus. But we'll just do our best that for next year, we'll run another, another training based on those needs that we think that our staff will be uh, will, will require to deliver better quality service in an open and distance learning system you have labeled them life enhancers you have labeled them uh, unique that their unique career path we can be more grateful to you thank you your excellency ambassador thank you. Uh, the next title on our program, as you can see, is 2.30. If you check your watches, you can see it's 2.30 is a presentation of certificates. As you saw uh, during the procession, we had several categories of certification. Distinction plus, distinction, no, distinction plus, plus, distinction. So we're going to present the certificates. Uh, for the distinction category, we have three subsets. We have the distinction plus plus. Distinction, the first debate, the distinction, is the performance of the participant in setting up and managing his or her virtual learning environment. So if you score 80% at least, that's 400 out of 500, you will earn a distinction. We also had something like the theoretical part of ODL. And that went on the career, on the conceptual path. So if you scored a distinction on the conceptual track, that's a plus. The third assessment is uh, that of the practical, practical exam in setting up and managing the virtual learning environment. In other words, we're not only just, we're not just satisfied with your, your setting it up, running for three weeks, but we gave them an exam in setting the thing up. And if you made a distinction that's 80% at least, you then had a plus. So somebody who has distinction plus plus with somebody who has distinction all through the three 
assessment uh, uh, categories. So you can see distinction plus and then distinction. The base, as I said, is this distinction, which is the virtual learning environment itself that was developed and implemented for three solid weeks. So this is an example of uh, how the certificate uh, will look like. I will go back to the procession again to show you very quickly the, uh, the, the names of those who have uh, earned this certificate. The le next level is the credit. And for credit, we have credit plus, meaning that the person and the credit that's 300 to 400 in the base assessment, that's the virtual learning environment. And then the plus, a distinction in either the conceptual or the practical VLE exam. So if you had a credit, that's the base. And then this is an example of the certificate, which our registrar, leading from the front, leading by example, Felix Edoka, N. Now, this is the merit one. You have merit, and this is an example of how it is written. And then you have the pass. This is an example of the pass. Council Chairman, our Vice Chancellor, Administrators, and colleagues. We are here today on the precipice of the future of the role of non teaching staff in the operations of Open University of Nigeria. This exposure what is required of us is to meet those challenges straight on with our heads high up. It is not enough to simply try to get by being a staff of NOUN. That does not move the university forward. It is a great gift to be prepared as we are because not all institutions offer such an advantage to staff. This training has accorded us all a high degree of insight into some functionalities of our esteemed university. We must try for excellence in every task we have to undertake. As non-teaching staff, we may not be directly involved in the delivery of academic operations. However, we are armed to guide and support our staff and students to strive for success at all times. The challenge for us is to do all that is possible to ensure that the university forges her head in its potentials. With this behind us, hopefully, management will take the issue of staff training more seriously and tainted towards other areas of specialization for non-teaching personnel. Like it is often said, ease is a greater step to progress. As the face of the institution that most stakeholders see, the future should be brightened by the performance of non-teaching staff. So as participants and colleagues, please, let us make the most of what we have learned as we look forward to a brighter day for National Open University of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Uh, wonderful speech. Uh, we will take on the next uh, person. Uh, Mr. Okay, Ritu, can... I will uh, I'll meet you in a minute. Yes, please take the floor, Mr. Kutu. Well Good afternoon, sir. Permit me to stand on the existing protocol. I consider it a privilege to be one of those choosing to give a vote of thanks for this training that we have just had in special open and distant learning training. Uh, I enjoyed the program as an individual. I wished it had come up before now. Maybe it will have uh, put the university in a good stead to, to handle things during the pandemic. It's a novel experience. I want to specially thank the Fazido General for this uh, wonderful opportunity that he has given to all of us. So on the behalf of this uh, wonderful set of people who participated, I thank management, I thank the participants, I thank the facilitators, and I pray God to continue to enhance everybody and our great university. Thank you. God bless you all. Wonderful. Thank you so very much, Mr. Kwetubola. Spot on, spot on. Uh, thank you. We'll press on with uh, the rest of uh, our program.
So we've had the two participants share their thoughts. So it's now for us to close the ceremony. Uh, by way of announcements, uh, I'm happy to let you know that as soon as this ceremony is over, uh, there's e-refreshment. Uh, that will be sent to us, uh, as, soon, as I said, as soon as we finish. And just check your inbox. You are going to find a package containing some wonderful drinks, some something, some things to snack on, uh, some suya, some all of those things. If you can't find this refreshment in your regular inbox, check your spam box. You'll find them there. Now, we're going to have e dinner at 8 p.m., uh, the e dinner is uh, going to be virtual and is going to uh, be in the guest speakers, <laughs> Ambassador Chris Mayaki's uh, uh, residence uh, in, uh, in in Washington. Oh, sorry, in, in Abuja. <laughs> <laughs> Your certificates are ready, as I said, and as soon as you finish, you'll be getting these uh, wonderful pieces of uh, documents that you will use for now and for the future. The plaques are also ready. Uh, they are on the way to Abuja now, and uh, oh, oh, by, by the weekend, you will get your plaques. We'd like to thank all members of council, our vice chancellor, our guest speaker, our grandpa, emeritus professor Nimi Briggs, and all those who found time to be part of this ceremony, including uh, the press. It now remains for us to close this ceremony and uh, the anthems will be placed, play, played and then we'll now go on the session now. Uh, thank you for coming.